So here as I'm rolling into the next turn and I've collected the taxes, hey, no big collapses this time, and uh, did the population expansions, I'm realizing how much things have morphed from where they normally are uh, in terms of sort of the center of civilization because there's this desire in the game to keep the cities that you can't rebuild easily. So, you know, Italy, their center is here, even though they've got population here and oddly enough down here. Uh, Assyria, their only city is here. They've got population here and this little sliver here. That's it. This isn't the Assyria I'm used to. I'm used to Assyria dominating the map uh, across here. So it's kind of amazing to see them do so poorly. Uh, of course, part of that's my fault in terms of screwing up. But, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Crete, ready to fill in the vacuum of the territory that they've kind of claimed. They're ready to go back in. We see Babylon looking powerful in a way that I'm not used to. Usually they get strangled by Assyria. Here it looks like it's gone the opposite. Egypt <laughs> slithered all over here where they kind of belong. But then a little bit up here. Africa having shifted their weight this way. And then up here in Sicily still always and up here. Um, Sicily because, hey, building a boat's an extra expense. You don't want to have to do that if you can avoid it. Italy, though, is the most amazing, just destroyed here. Thrace also. Lots and lots of manpower, no cities. Their only cities are down on these islands. It's just interesting to look at all that and, and you know, I do my drumming thing, picturing what's going on and everything, and it's, uh, it's pretty intense. Some interesting decisions going on. For example, Assyria has chosen not to, um, build any cities. They've got one city. Part of the reason is because of the Cretan uh, embargo. Embargoing Crete means there's going to be less trading going on. Another is this gives me a chance to get my population up and maybe build more cities than I would uh, if I only built one. It also allowed me to push harder into Crete and do some damage to them. But that's a really risky proposition because, well, I'm not going to draw a calamity. But what if Babylon, who say got famine, hits me with it for 11 points. That probably isn't bad enough that'll send me back. I only need to keep two pieces and I've got a significant amount lying on the board. Okay, safe enough. Over here, Thrace picked up civil war. Uh, point wise, Egypt made it up to eight cities, but they had to destroy this one because, well, they got kind of trashed by some Africans down here and their numbers didn't work out as well as they thought they would. All right, on to trade. So here's the problem. A deal exists and Africa's essentially willing to break their agreement between Crete and Africa. The deal is this 27 bucks worth of salt for what works out to be a hundred bucks worth of cloth because it's two more cloth for them. Now it helps Crete, there's no question. And here's the thing, I, I tested it and they're willing to go with it. They're willing to go. I give you three salt and you're uh, worth, I give you three cards salt worth 27 for two card or three cards cloth worth 22. Of course there could be a cheat in there actually, but it's going to be kind of tough with three cards. Anyway, they're doing this, and basically, that invalidates anybody really trying to screw over Crete. Because they've already made their deal. Uh, it may not be enough to get them forward. But, you know, once someone does that, well, now, does everybody stop dealing with Africa? Well, that was the point. Africa couldn't find anyone else willing to deal. They couldn't get a deal with the cards they had, so they said, well... Oh, by the way, they made a deal and picked up a new uh, disaster, this civil disorder here, which uh, they got that off Egypt, which kind of soured their desire. They think they're so far behind back here and not able to move forward that the hell with it. They're not going to win anyway. They just want this over, right? And you're going to always see things like that. And that's actually one of the things is that this trade refusal is very difficult because there's always going to be players who probably, it's a long game. 
you know, and they can't, you can't enforce trade refusal. You can enforce it on one person who's in the lead, but you can't enforce it on, you know, all of this. And Italy's probably going to make their bridge too. Africa certainly doesn't care. They're not gonna. They're not gonna win either way they put it. They might as well make the trade, get it over with. And after Africa breaks its deal, well, when Italy finds no one else can trade with them except Crete, they do too. They trade a salt for a couple grains, and you know they're far enough behind. And the point here is, Crete's making money off each of these trades less maybe than the person they're than the person they're dealing with, but it's kind of like um, neighborhood busting, right? A really good deal can go to the people who are willing to relax their uh, embargo or whatever. Anyway, onward. There were some definite purchases here. Um, let's see who needed to. Babylon wasn't able to make their purchase, but they held a lot of cards for the famine, a lot of grain for the famine, so they're not going to be affected by it, which kind of makes up for it. And they get a lot of room before they have to reach their thousand points. Crete, the most interesting of them, the best they could do in terms of uh, cheapest was agriculture and, oh, uh, I think it was architecture, and that didn't give them quite enough points. Instead, they bought just law. They've still got another card space. And they've got a richer position for going into here. The extra 200 bucks worth of stuff should be well within their reach uh, after whatever they buy. We're talking they can trim about 80 bucks. So they need a decent set to end the game. Uh, let's say they're 1,080. That means they need 120. That's a reasonable set to hit. 200 is not a reasonable set, so if you just make your 1,000 points off your 11 cards, which is, you know, what I was kind of hoping to do, I, not in terms of, oh, that'll make things easy to win, but in terms of, well, at least I won't have to stop, um, then you have to get a decent, powerful trade card hand. And without the expanded cards, beyond the trading factor, you can only hold six cards in your hand. So... Uh, that becomes a little more difficult because a big you've got to go for a bigger valued card set you can't do like they did where they turned in something like seven salt or something which is worth 140 something bucks they could conceivably pile this up and get it high enough um italy and uh africa the two judases in this have both worked their way up to six cards uh, Italy picking up agriculture and literacy, I think, and or no, just agriculture, and Africa getting agriculture and architecture. Uh, I've got some calamities to resolve here. Nothing to. Oh, the civil disorders new. Uh, I'll come back to that after I, I do the others. Okay, well, let's take a look at what uh, our other disasters have done. <coughs> the famine, of course, did not affect uh, Babylon. But they hit 11 points of it on Crete, which you can see <coughs> got rid of another Cretan city, I think, and wiped out some of their manpower. And nine more points on Assyria, and uh-oh, there's only one Assyrian left in their homeland. They got a couple over here in Greece and this. That's, that's all they got. Uh, they're really wiped out. Um, now, why would you pick on somebody doing so poorly? Well, they're in second place on the column. Um... Keeping them from going forward, if the trade embargo had worked on Crete, would allow Thrace and Egypt to catch up uh, to, to, to Assyria and probably push past at this point. Because Assyria is just that close to being out of this uh, in terms of falling back a space, which is a powerful, powerful factor. It's going to be tough to knock all the cities out from Crete. It's a really hard thing to do, but Assyria was playing it very close here. And they're down to just a couple of pieces. They probably can't build another city. They're probably screwed next turn, and who knows for how long. Um, we also had the Civil War for Thrace, and we can see all kind of Italian stuff showing up in the middle of Thrace, and then they also got more solidified up here. Uh, 
they picked Italy. Why? Well, Italy's in the worst position, not past the barrier yet like Babylon is, and furthest back. So helping them out doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, that's why you want to be able to pick who you help, uh, as opposed to guy with the most stock. Of course, the guy with the most stock thing you know, fixes a problem, but, well, whatever. The problem can be fixed just by allowing someone to refuse it. Uh, Africa has the civil disorder. Now, this is an interesting event. Every city above four is reduced. They get to keep four of their cities, the rest are reduced. <sighs> what do they want to lose? Well, they have six cities, I think. Two, three, four, five, six. They want to keep that. It's hard to... Uh, to hold on to. I think they're going to reduce these two. And by reduced, means they get four there. Ooh, they have agriculture. They get a fifth guy there. Because they get up to what they can hold in the place. And they get four guys there. Alright. Hopefully they can pay their taxes. Uh, let's think quickly before we do this. Two, three, four. That's going to be eight bucks in taxes because we don't have coinage. We're not going to be able to afford it. Uh, we're going to have to pick a different city to reduce. Mm. Okay. And this is the kind of thinking that I've been not engaging in, not making those checks every time. Am I safe? Uh, okay. So that's the end of the civil disorder. Let's see. And that can be reduced, like most of these, some cards affect, in this case, the law and democracy, which each reduce the amount of, uh, the amount of piece of damage you can take. Law is a special card. You can't get any of the other, uh, the, the de democracy or philosophy until you have law. You can buy law, democracy, and or philosophy all on the same turn. You just need to buy the law first or as part of that deal. Uh, now, going forward, Africa does not make it. Italy doesn't make it. Thrace, they're not busted. Crete didn't make it. Assyria still goes forward a little bit. Oh, I was like not showing you what's happening here. Uh, Babylon can go forward, and Egypt can go forward, and they're hitting the wall now along with Assyria. But, now it's a close race again. Um, Assyria's got three, six, seven, eight cards, and that's it. I remember they had kind of low values, though. They were going to have a tough time making that ledge, and a really tough time when they only have one city there. All right, up this one goes.